Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, we are going to talk about Cube Controller and Cube Scheduler. So I quickly want to cover all these uh, Kubernetes primitives so that we can actually move to some good stuff, which is mostly hands-on stuff, right? So I want to cover these theories quickly. So Cube Controller is another component of the Kubernetes ecosystem that actually manages all the operational work, you can say. So it's actually not a single component. It's actually a co combination of multiple smaller components, but they are packaged and installed as a single binary. So if you are deploying your cluster using kubeadm, it would be running as a pod. Or if you are deploying your cluster from scratch, then probably you can just download the binary from Kubernetes release pages and run it as a service. So there are many controllers. I mean, controller man, I mean, if you if you would see and if you would list the pods in kube system namespace, you would see that there's a pod called kube system manager. But inside that, there are multiple uh, controller so you have a controller for pod you have a controller for replication you have a deployment controller you have a node controller right so let's say for example replication controller so replication controller actually manages and actually ensures that you have a particular number of pods always running so how does it do that it basically keeps monitoring the api server for any changes so suppose we have a pod running over here and this goes down the kubelet actually informs the API server that pod has got down. The API server, the first thing it does is actually uh, stores that information or updates that information into the etcd cluster. Uh, since we have already seen that no other component talks directly to etcd apart from API server. So that is why the controller manager actually talks to the API server to get this current state from etcd. It sees that there's a pod which has gone down and then it actually tries to respawn another pod. So that's how basically your controller manager is working, right? So yeah, and that is all you need to understand about your controller manager. So you have different controller managers, probably you can just go and read about them. Uh, in short, you don't actually need to go a lot in depth uh, knowledge for these controller manager. I mean, you just need to know the basic function and some basic uh, controller which are available to you, like the pod controller, uh, node controller and replication controller. So these are some important controllers. We'll go, uh, when we'll go on to terminal, we'll see how they're configured in a mini cube cluster. All right, so now let me get rid of this. All right, let me just quickly delete these. And we'll talk about scheduler. So scheduler. So scheduler, uh, I mean, it's another component of Kubernetes uh, ecosystem that actually finds a node when i mean whenever you create a kubernetes object like pod or deployment the scheduler actually goes and looks out for the worker node which would be most apt to deploy the deployment or to run the pods basically right so how does it do that so scheduler actually works uh, let me see scheduler so it has two stages so first one is filtering and the second one is, I think it's called scoring. Yeah. So these are the two stages which uh, actually scheduler uses to find the correct worker node to deploy a pod. So let me just get rid of this. So suppose I'll give you an example. We have three worker nodes. Or say four worker nodes this one has 1 gb of memory this one has 10 gb of memory this one has 15 gb of memory and this one has say 500 mb of memory all right and i want to run a pod which requires 2 gb of memory right so my pods requirement is 2 gb so the first thing which scheduler does so suppose this is my scheduler it does filtering so it goes through all the nodes or the, all the worker nodes which are available and it tries to filter the best nodes so as you can see out of these the two nodes which are available where i can schedule these pods are this one and this one so scheduler filter these two nodes out so these two nodes are out of uh, competition as you can say now comes the scoring part so now scoring is actually done based on the resources which would be left 
after scheduling this pod. So once I'll schedule this pod on this node, the memory which would be left for this one would be 8 GB and on this one it would be 13 GB. So now scheduler actually assigns a score to these pods and depending upon the score, this pod gets a higher score than this one. So this one gets a low score and this one gets a higher score. So the pod is actually scheduled on the node which has the higher score. So our pod would actually be score, uh, scheduled on this particular node. Uh, I've already told you in an earlier video that uh, when you create a pod object or any object in Kubernetes using Kube, I mean kubectl commands, you are actually creating an object. You are not actually creating the pod. So the pod in actuality is actually created by kubelet, which actually, which in, I mean, behind the scene talks to the container runtime and it passes on all the information to the container runtime and the container runtime actually spawns the uh, containers, right? So you're just creating a Kubernetes object when you are interacting with kube API server. All right, so this is how you basically run your kube uh, scheduler and kube controller. Now we can just go on to terminal and see how they're configured, right? So let's just go on to terminal and see how they're configured. All right, so now I'm on my terminal and you can see I have my mini kube started and we are running one node cluster. So now let's quickly look at the controller uh, pods, which would be deployed in our kube system namespace. So kubectl get pods hyphen n kube system. So you can see the name of our controller manager is kube controller manager hyphen minikube. So minikube actually gives it uh, its uh, own prefix or suffix, sorry. So let's look at the configuration of this. So let's simply do a describe kubectl describe pod and don't forget to give the namespace. And you have all the configuration. So if you go up, so this is actually the configuration which is defined for this controller. Uh, so if I just wanted to get one information out of this, which is hyphen hyphen controllers. So by default, uh, when you run, I mean, kube controller using kube ADM or you get, uh, I mean, a binary and run it as a service, you're running all the controllers. You can see that it's, it, I mean, after equal to it's an asterisk. So we are running all containers, uh, all controllers. But you can actually, I mean, it is configurable. So you can, if suppose if you want to run, say, just the replication controller and the node controller. So you can actually provide those controllers and it will only run uh, replication controller and node controller. So this is actually how you can configure this setting. All right, so now let's look at our scheduler. So again, we'll do kubectl get pods. and let's look at our scheduler which is this we'll do a describe pods let's look at this configuration so this is the default uh, one thing i forgot to tell you so this is the default uh, scheduler which which is created when you actually create your uh, cluster using kubeadm but you can actually write your own scheduler and we will do that uh, later in the this course basically we will uh, write custom scheduler and we would schedule our pods using our custom scheduler so you can actually define when you're creating pods that which scheduler you want to use so uh, we'll we'll do that as well when when we'll go move move forward in this course right so you can see the, uh, the configuration for this and all the annotations and this is the configuration so not much have been defined here leader elect i'll tell you why they have done this leader elect as false but that is a little i mean advanced concept so we'll talk about it when we'll actually do custom schedulers this is the configuration file it's using and there's nothing much over here so this is actually i mean how you can get the uh, your cube scheduler configs all right, so this is, I mean, it for controller and scheduler. Uh, this is all I wanted to show you. We'll probably go in deep, I mean, more because it's not just, I mean, it's not as simple as it looks that scheduling happens. There are so many things that a scheduler has to take in consideration like taints and tolerance, no affinity and things like that before scheduling a pod, right? So we'll look into all those stuff, uh, taints and tolerations, what is no affinity, 
how we can actually schedule a pod on a particular node which we, which we want we can also do that so for that i would actually have to create a cluster with more number of nodes so we'll move away from minikube and probably in the next videos upcoming videos we'll have a running cluster uh, with probably say two worker nodes and a master nodes because then we would actually be able to see how we can uh, schedule do scheduling on a particular node how we can write our own custom schedulers and things like that all right so this is it for this video guys i hope you like the video please do subscribe to the channel before leaving and yep thank you for watching